while. It's just been like, all right, it's dark, so we. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Okay, so, so yeah, yeah, it just seems like I've really enjoyed it a lot, living without electricity, and I feel like things are more of an adventure, like it's dark, and so I get the candle, and then I go into the pantry, and I'm looking for things, and now I can um, walk through the workshop at night in the complete dark and the pitch black, and I know where all the benches are, and where I need to go to get to my room, so it's just like I'm kind of becoming more aware of my surroundings, and just learning how to do things in a different way. Lights, action, camera, love saves the day. <laughs> Everyone's got their own rhythm that they got to play. Oh, saves the day, that's what I say. Oh, love saves the day. There's a million ways to pray. Oh, love saves the day with love. Everything's gonna be okay. I'll oh, make your way. Oh, oh, oh. There's a lot of um, emotional, like, inner work that happens here, and, you know, it can be kind of scary. Are people going to see, like, my dark areas and still love me? But luckily, people here are just so supportive and embracing of, like, everyone's humanness, and that's a huge reason it just, like, feels like such a breath of relief to be here. So, yeah. Throughout the day, we have the bell of mindfulness, and it's like we we work, and then and then like take take a moment to like be where we are, become present, and so like we can't, so we don't get lost in the in you know the thought realm or like the monkey mind, as I've heard people refer to it here. And um, it's like a mindfulness bar right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the clock. It could huh? be. We could take a moment. We could take a moment. Let's, Let's take, take a moment. moment. When we set out on this journey, I asked myself the question, how can I pass along a lush, beautiful, sustainable world to future generations? Now I see people all over the country doing that, even in very radical ways, like our new friends at the Possibility Alliance. We knew the best thing we could do to give back was to keep pushing forward on the journey. So I was actually dragged, kind of kicking and screaming, into my first intentional community situation by my son's father. I was not convinced. I basically had all of the stereotypes about community in my head, and it was like, there is no way in hell that I am going to some stupid hippie commune in the middle of nowhere and getting isolated. So he dragged me into it, and I basically said, okay, you got 24 hours on this place, and I'll go with you, but that's it. And so I, as quickly as I could sort of stuff my pride, I said, okay, we can stay another day. And then, okay, maybe we can stay another day. And by the end of three or four days, I was sold. I mean, it was really that quick where I went from being completely resistant to really getting it. The communities are doing something really important. Dancing Rabbit, we do not have a joining fee. However, you do have to be able to house yourself in some way, and we have a pretty open policy on what housing looks like here. Some people have built a whole fully functional personal home, and some people have lived in a tent for many years. We've combined the reusing and reclaiming material and the natural building aspect together to make housing for people. This is an earth bag structure. Basically, it's just uh, bags thrown together with a bunch of dirt thrown on top on the outside, and we planted some seeds there to make it look pretty. And it took a little over a calendar year to finish. I spent roughly $3,000 on materials, so it was pretty cheap. And a lot of times people visit and they're like, oh, I can't move here. I don't know how to build my own house. But all the people that came before you have probably built their own house, which is a really great part of living in community. Like, you can be working on something like, oh no, what do I do now? What do I do about that? And you go and ask your friend. Hey, you all want to do some heavy lifting with us?
I really feel super powerful, like I have a lot of agency, I've learned how to operate a circular drill and I know how to change the bit. I just feel it's really empowering to know natural building techniques. All of these things make me feel like more of a human being. And what we're doing here is putting three buckets of sand and one bucket of clay and then we're just going to start stomping it. It's just a little stomping action, get good exercise, dance, do it with your friends. What I love about community is that you see the results of your handiwork right away. Well, a lot of people are doing like cob on one wall and drop it on another. Do you want yeah, me to put some I, I think it takes probably more human time mm -hmm. to build it, yeah. but it I think it's totally it worth it. I wanted to create like an example of how people could live sustainably, not not assuming that it would be the only way people could live sustainably, but just an example. And we wanted it to be a large enough community to really have like a fully fledged um, social and economic structure. Our dream of running an eco inn at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village kind of happened by mistake. I wanted to run a bookstore, but because Dancing Rabbit is located near a town of 103, I really didn't think I'd sell a lot of books. So we thought and thought and thought, and the answer was right in front of us all the time. We get hundreds of visitors every year, and some don't want to camp or can't. We want people to be able to come, and even if they don't ever join or thought interested in joining, we want them to come and learn and experience what it's like to be in a straw bale building and what it's like to work with solar and wind power, that it's kind of seamless, it isn't really a hard thing. Um, what is it like knowing all your neighbors? The song means a lot to me because we had tried so hard to put down roots in the Appalachians where we thought we belonged, and never in a million years thought we would, like, belong on the prairie. Amen, <laughs> <down there. laughs> sister. I knew that something special was going on here, but I thought it was a lot smaller and less developed than it actually is. The dream and the vision that I've held throughout this journey of living in a village, of people actually living conscious lives, building with the earth, living with the earth, growing their own food, I've never seen anything so alive and vibrant. What does it take to live in a sustainable community? It really takes a certain kind of person who's very self-directed. It's going to take you a long time and be a lot of work. You take on too many projects at once and it feels like you never get anything finished. Next idea is to get a part-time job. I mean, it's what it takes to ride a bike across the country. You, you get up and you address one thing at a time and you get yourself to a place where you can get on the bike and ride. We need to Niagara Falls on our bikes. You'll have moments of pure joy, but <laughs> you'll also have moments of like some serious pain. You looked at me and you assumed that I knew what you wanted and I had no idea. Well, 
we were biking along Lake Erie and it turned to a dirt road and then it turned into a grass road and now it's turned into, oh my gosh, it's a dead end. I had to take our bags off to get it There are moments when it feels too difficult to continue. Moments you want to turn back to the comforts of a lifestyle you once knew and let go of the dream. I can't just get up from having had no sleep whatsoever and then not even eat food right away. I have no energy. And then to have this happen, it just put me over the edge. I can't. This is an unhealthy lifestyle to be going on like this. We're not going to live this lifestyle forever, you know. <laughs> you know, this journey is full of rewards. And the struggles, you know, they're hard. I have to admit, I mean, I don't even know why we're doing this 12,000 mile trek anymore. It's We went on this epic journey to find a place to live in a sustainable community, right. and that's really important to me, mm -hmm. and I know it is to you, mm -hmm. because that means we're surrounding ourselves with people who are supportive and loving, and we're able to give right. constantly just by being in community. I mean, we've been living on the road, going from one place to the next every day for yeah. a year. So having five months at a time at places <laughs> is a, it's a, it's a fine transition for me, you know? It was really wonderful getting to join this community in particular because it was a very clear juxtaposition of gifts that we were giving each other. We were giving them the gift of all the sustainability lessons we'd been learning from these communities. Ta-da! <laughs> when they said sustainability is a journey, and all you have to do is just take the next step in the process. I got very excited. We're going to raise the rain barrel up so that it's gravi it can gravity feed into a bucket. One of the things you guys talked about early on that really impacted me was how sustainability is supported by healthy community. But I think what we've just arrived at more recently here is recognizing this third sphere of how spirituality um, actually is more central than either of those because in order to function with other people you need to have a practice uh, and a way of working with yourself. I would say that the thing that has sustained us is our spiritual practice and the trust and connection that we've created through being practitioners in a similar meditation practice. A community uh, has to be not facing, looking at each other, uh, but everyone facing out and looking at larger benefit. In this new millennium, we have a chance to change the way we see other beings to one of connectedness and unity. We have a chance to let go of the ancient ways of war and conflict, of who is right, of being better, of senseless killing. When we stopped for the winter, we realized we didn't need to give up on our dream to live sustainably in community. Instead, it gave us a chance to take a long, deep pause, to go inside and reflect on where we'd been and what we'd learned, and to really deeply listen for the next step. In the meantime, we thought, well, let's take a look at where we have been and which one of those places might actually be the favorite one so far. For us, we realized there were certain physical aspects that were important. We really wanted to live in a rural place and um, in somewhere that was growing food, like at Cobb Hill. A place near water. We wanted a place near a train station. We wanted a place that had a spiritual practice.